everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. Um, today we're going to paint some cactus and I've been spending some time today brushing up on something which I haven't done for a long time. Um, but uh, I hope you're going to be happy with this idea. This is my trial piece here and um, I'm going to be using for this, I've already drawn the sketch, I'm going to be using these six colours and I've got here some new colours that haven't come across with me before, as well as my um, trusty quinacridone gold. I've got here um, Chevening and Green, which is a kind of, um, I suppose you would call it a strong sap green, so if you've got sap green that would do. Um, here I've got Hooker's Green which is a more of a bluish tone, whereas this is a little bit more yellow. So this is cold and this is warm. And here we've got two reds. We've got a warm red, which is cadmium red, and a cool red, which is permanent rose. Um, and here we've got, like I said, we've got the yellow, which is quinacridone gold. And I've also got Venetian red here, um, which I'm going to use just mostly for the, um, the dish that these cacti are sitting in. Um, if in fact I decide to put them in a dish because in this one, which was my trial, I just had them standing in a pot but on the ground. So you could take the pot out and have the cactus on the ground if you wanted to. So obviously you can alter the composition to suit you. So I'm sorry, I'm not going to draw the sketch out, but it will be available on the website. Um, it's just it takes an awful lot longer if I actually just draw it uh, for you. But this is basically just ovals all connected together and uh, like I say you can get the sketch from the website dianantoncom they're free you just go over there and uh, download the sketch that you want um, okay so I do like whenever I'm painting anything to start with quinacridone gold as a background so I'm going to drop in quinacridone gold in the background here and uh, by, by this point in time, I have an idea how this paper is going to work. Um, this is stretched paper. This is um, stretched onto a, a board and um, hopefully it'll behave itself. And now having put the yellow in, I'm going to drop in, I think I'm gonna drop in a mixture of the two blues, uh, a little bit, a little bit at random. And then I'm going to just spread that out a little like that. And I'm going to also um, pop in a little bit of pink, to, oops, that's green, <laughs> to give it a little bit of shadow on one side. A little bit of bluish pink. And we have lines coming down, so I'm just going to lift out some of the colour to give it a bit of variation there, and we'll let that mix and mingle, which it will. Um, and then to, uh, to um, give different tones and different values, to your areas is a good idea. So I've mixed permanent rose with hooker's green and I'm just going to drop that in here and then I'm going to add a few other colors like that. And then I'll do the same again for the next section. Hooker's green and permanent rose and then sap green and alizarin and uh, quinacridone there. And then we'll do this one a little bit lighter because as they go up, they get kind of lighter. So I'll just put a bit more dark down there. 
And then this one at the back here is going to be, um, I think, what are we going to do that one? We're going to do it sort of mauve kind of, a bit more mauve -ish. So we'll start off with the pink and mix it in with the hookers and then we'll pop that in and then we'll come back with the quinacridone drop that in a bit more green and then some more quinacridone and green at the top and we'll just let that mix and mingle might be a little bit too much there and maybe a little bit more of the purple there we go and then down the bottom here again I quite liked what I did with the hookers and the um, permanent rose to give me a grey which we'll pot it, pop in here and then we'll come in with the quinacridone and the sap green and this gives it plenty of variety in the colour one ought to be slightly different. If you feel it's gone a bit too bluish, just drop in some more quinacridone in part of it, say on the left hand side, and then let that bleed. Okay, so now if we are going to do the dish, Again, we'll start off with the yellow. And, you know, some people might say, oh, well, why don't I just do a yellow dish then? Well, you could. But I'm going to call this terracotta. So I'm just going to bring in a loose wash of um, Venetian red which I'm going to mix with a little bit of green for the soil area. So we'll just make a nice dark contrast there. And then we'll get some more quinacridone and a tiny touch of the Venetian and then bring that in on this side. to make it a little bit roughly kind of symmetrical and then we'll pop in a shadow and that's permanent rose and hooker's green now the flower flowers I'm going to use a mixture of permanent rose and cadmium red and first of all I'm just going this is mostly permanent rose so then we'll just add some cadmium and these ones are going to be the same roughly 
We'll do the first layer and then we'll come back. <coughs> the whole thing we'll revisit once it's dry. This, because this is obviously in shadow, we're just going to drag that reflected light down there. And when this is dry, we'll sharpen that up because I'm going to come in with a, uh, a pigment liner to do all the spiky bits because it's full of spiky bits. Now, before we go any further, I want to um, mix up a sort of mixture of Venetian and hookers to make a kind of greyish green. And then, hopingly, hopingly, I can avoid touching anything. I'm just gonna drag that down. And then I'm going to soften all of that just by taking a clean, wet brush over those lines that I just drew, shakily. There we are, that's step one. Now that needs to dry. Just a quick thing while it's still damp. Don't pop a bit of salt in there. To give that a bit more texture. And I'll just uh, wet that one a little bit too. And we put some salt in all three of those. And that'll give us a nice interesting effect hopefully okay so it's dry now and I'm just going to now remove the salt from this I don't really like rubbing it with my fingers because I'm concerned about Grease, although I'd, no, I haven't got any hand cream on or anything, uh, going into the paint. But when you use salt, sometimes you have to just lightly run your fingers over. It's like masking fluid. There's not really any substitute. Fingers came before forks, as we used to say. Uh, okay, so that's where we're at now. We've got some lovely texture there on these particular prickly pears. And um, oh, I'm going to sit myself down now for the next stage. Um, I could either do a little bit more, well, maybe I, no, maybe I won't. I'm not going to paint anything else at the moment. What I'm going to do is grab my uh, pigment liner and um, I'm going to do some, uh, what do you call them, some spiky bits because that's what these creatures have, they have lots of spiky bits and it's very hard to do something as fine and spiky and got on, pushed on, vicious as these spiky bits with a brush. So we can't really do that. So we're going to just basically scribble them in with a fine liner. They kind of, on this one they go, they look like sort of spiders when they're looking face on like that. So I'm going to go over the whole thing and do that. Um, and then the this one here has got kind of same thing coming out in pairs on the side there. So we'll just put pairs 
coming out like that and then of course has some more coming down on these lines here. Since I started to paint these today, I've suddenly decided what I need is a cactus collection. We can't really have many house plants in our house because we have four house, uh, three house cats and um, they like to eat things that grow. So for example, we've got lots of spider plants and one of our cats will eat anything. He really is a complete lunatic. He eats paper towel, for God's sake. Would you believe it? And um, uh, he would, he would, he does. He eats um, house plants and then he throws up, of course. Poor thing. Here's a question for all you wise ladies out there. We have this cat, and I, I hope somebody out there will listen to this and know the answer. We have a cat, he's a French cat, of course, because we're in France. Um, he's half Siamese. There was a very active Siamese Tom here at one point, some years ago, it seems, and he's fathered half the cats in the, in the department. So most of the cats here are half Siamese, which is really funny, because he looks very elegant and sensible, but he's an absolute idiot. And um, he's, for the last few months, he's been chewing at his feet and legs and he's making himself bald. And before anyone says, oh, he's got some kind of parasite or something, he hasn't. He has not uh, been invaded by the body snatchers. He's snatching his own body. Does anyone know what might cause a cat to do that? We, we think it might be a psychological problem because, as I said, he's a bit of a lunatic. Um, but does anyone know what you can do? We're giving him bath flower remedies and uh, it might be making a bit of a difference. But I don't know. It's very strange. Um, now, I think these have dots on, don't they? So does anyone know what you can do about a cat who, it, basically he's overzealous about grooming himself. That's what it is, basically. How do you stop a cat from over grooming? Okay, so we're going to strengthen up the color of these flowers a bit. Permanent rose, overlaying what was underneath and burying it permanent rose and uh, what did I say it was um, cadmium red and down here as well just strengthening that up a little bit I haven't drawn them, but I think these often have little thingies over here, don't they? If you're lucky, they'll flower. Okay, maybe a tiny bit of shadow in there. Just emphasize those lines a little bit more. You could go on for hours refining this. I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow in the front there. That will die back as it dries, don't worry. And I don't know, do you think we should have a little bit more dark here? And, oops, should touch. You can do that because they do have these ridges and so you can emphasize the outside. This is a brilliant one for people who love to fiddle. This is the fiddler's paradise. I always say don't fiddle. Well, you can fiddle as much as you like on this. 
This is Fiddler's Paradise. I'll go down here. And I'm going to put more of those spiky bits in, but I'm not going to bore you watching me because you know what that's all about. Okay. So there's the final painting. Just adding one or two little pen lines up here. And uh, the, um, the pen does actually bring quite a bit of interest and uh, structure into this. And because it's a spiky sort of plant, I think it's a good idea to use some pen. I'm not outlining all of it by any means, but it does. You don't have to, and it works quite well without if you don't want to. But I think that that's quite, quite a nice effect. I mean, you can come in with a bit more paint on some of the lines if you want, but I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, and I'm going to say thank you very much for being with me today. And I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you give that a try. It's uh, a lot of fun, actually. I really enjoyed doing that. It's quite liberating to do something completely different. Um, just thinking, probably could do with a little bit of something there. Anyway, not going to play with that anymore, except maybe, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, whatever. Don't forget to visit the website, dianeanton.com. I think I mentioned that once already, so forgive me for repeating myself, but some people might be at the end and not at the beginning. Lottie is in with the sheep again, and I'm going to have to go and fetch her out. She is a pickle, that dog. Um, so I'll see you here again tomorrow, and I'm sorry we missed one yesterday, but um, we had a technical hitch. But uh, all back to normal now. So thanks very much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.